everyone. Not a lot of people here yet. Let's, I guess, give it a couple of minutes. Hi. Hi. So I think Jared was gonna try to join also. So we'll, uh, um, it doesn't appear to be online, it's Slack right now. So I guess we can. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe as, uh, as these meetings, usually the, during the first couple of meetings, a lot of people show up. It might be beneficial to send it out to the mailing list again, because sometimes people get, get confused by themselves so just as they. That's a, that's a great idea. Um, so I'll add that to the, the, the agenda here. Um, cool. um, great. So there's not like a, a, a lot on the, on the planned agenda right now. Um, so everybody has access to the doc here. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, meetings being recorded, uh, We'll send out a link to it afterwards. Um, but like I mentioned, there's like there's no announcements, there's no like planned like items on, on the topic. So like let's start off with you know kind of like putting the agenda together for the meeting today. Does anybody have anything that they 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 want to discuss? They want to add to the agenda? Like go ahead and just add um, them to the doc or talk here. The only thing that we could add is the existing document about the operator definition that I could throw in maybe. While we are reading here, because that was like the first goal. Yep. Uh, let me just find it that everybody has it available. Okay, you're gonna drop a link into the docker. Yeah, I just had to open it up there. Yeah. Um, drop it right into the doc. Just give me a second. Sure. We can share and discuss what is already there if you want to. I'll just take one more second. And here we go. Should be able to. Perfect. Um, Cool. I can actually um, share my screen and we can have this doc up just in case anybody doesn't have access to it right now. Uh, one second. Great. Um, cool. So I'm sharing it. I have the, the doc up on the screen here. Everybody can see it okay? Yep. Um, Awesome. So I think, you know, like the, the goal here is to continue to, um, to define like, you know, what, what, it, what an operator is. I think that's like the first step before the word really, you know, put, do, do, do much else. Um, like what's included in an operator, what's not included in an operator. Um, I th this is like a doc that's been going around for a while. So I think everybody's hopefully had a chance to read it. Um, and like, you know, I, I don't know if like, it's definitely not something we're going to like be able to like solve today uh, on this call, but like I think we should like continue to push forward on like the, the discussion and see what you know if anybody has any more any further thoughts on it. Well, hey, 
folks. Uh, yeah, Matt Freen here. I, I actually have a lot of thoughts on, on this doc. Um, some of them I've put in it. I was looking at it again this morning. But what I've noticed here, and maybe it's me, the question was originally asked, uh, what is an operator? Right. That, that was what was asked from the TOC to uh, SIGAP delivery. But I noticed that the doc gets a lot into things that go beyond that, such as a capability model. Um, and the capability model came out of the operator framework. Uh, it hasn't really been worked out with the other operator projects. Uh, and it also isn't something that was actually asked of well anybody from the TOC. Uh, and so I think maybe looking at what um, they actually asked, like what is an operator and all the nuances to just kind of define what it is and then explain that. I think that's what they asked for. And, and this doc kind of diverges from it. And so that's my big high level Matt, thing. Matt, 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 I think this, yeah. uh, this document had the purpose of collecting information that was already available out there uh, on different levels and Part of that definition was also what capabilities an operator should provide beyond the pure technical ones, and that's why this made it in there. And I don't think we have to live by the word of everything that we have been asked to do, uh, but also provide uh, what is needed by the community. And when we discussed this, uh, we had certain discussions, um, especially around like what separates an operator from a controller. And that's why we threw it in there. That this doesn't mean, however, that out of this definition, we need to have an, a capability model in there. We just put it in there when it comes to capabilities because beyond the operator model, there was discussions, should it only be stateful or non-stateful non workloads? So that's the reason why it's in there. So nobody said we're defining an, a capability model in here. So, so let me ask this then. So if this document captures a whole bunch of things, is this the document that we are planning to pass up that kind of explains, here's what an operator is, here's the outcome, or is this a place that's just capturing a bunch of information and talking through it? This, as currently stated, is a working document. And as such, we are working here. Uh, we can rename it if this makes it more clear. Yeah, because we're, you know the working document that captures lots of things is different than kind of the output that answers the questions and that's useful for people who walk away because the general person is not going to be as involved in this conversation as say you or me, and they just want the outcome in a, in a short, concise manner. Um, but a working document that captures lots of things and links out to it and maybe has long form explanations. That, that entirely makes sense to capture all of these things. But I would suggest that a capability model may be something that should be gotten into, but I would separate it from the definition. So that way the definition can get out there quickly. And these kinds of things that probably should be discussed with lots of different operator projects, Kudo, operator framework, and the other ways of doing things um, will take a lot longer to get through. And it may change drastically by the time that it comes out. Who knows what will come out from those long form discussions. Yeah, my, my my understanding and my my hope is that this document is that working document that we kind of like think of it as the all-encompassing things that may make it into that final like definition of an operator and then we can distill it down into that smaller like this is actually what the definition of an operator is and if the capability model is or is not in it i think that's a decision we make but like like we should definitely include it as like a candidate to make it into a into the into the definition over time like i i I, I don't I'm not I don't have an opinion about whether or not it is part of that, but like like you know, right now I think it's like like data collection mode. What could potentially make it into the definition of an operator before we can actually figure out like what what to pick as like this is actually what the operator is defined as. I, 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 like that, that, oh, that, that, yeah, that like if if like maybe we just break out like a sources or prior and sorry sorry everyone, I had the wrong calendars turned on. Um like maybe we have like a prior art or like research section in here just to make it clear like like this is just stuff that we are uh taking lead from right or or, or distilling in because i <clears throat> i'm i'm of the mind like maybe this is not part of the like like we have a separate goal to like build a maturity model or like think about maturity models um or or just consider those things um that i don't think is part of this but you know th th there's definitional stuff that's in this capability model that we may want to refer to when building out our actual definition I just linked the actual definition, by the way, that is currently in the Kubernetes definition, um, in the Kubernetes documentation. I just put it in the agenda. So uh, we have this one there as well. 
Yeah. And I think like, I think we're, the reason that we're here is because like this current definition that's in the Kubernetes documentation is somewhat vague and, and lacking. And so we're trying to like, yeah. But it, it actually covers, yeah. But it actually covers the capability model because it, can, can you, as you're sharing, can, can you bring it up? Because it says like deploying an application on demand, taking and restoring backups of the application, handling upgrades, publishing a service application that at service applications that don't support Kubernetes APIs to discover them, simulating failure in all parts of your cluster to test its resilience. So there is actually part, yeah, exactly, that's bit, bits and pieces. So we have it currently in the Kubernetes documentation as examples. Well, it, it doesn't actually say this is the capability model. It's giving examples of what it might look like to do that. And it gives examples here, but it doesn't actually say what it is, which means logically that this could be it doesn't mean that it's everything that's inclusive or that it involves some kind of structure for a capability model. I think it's just trying to paint the picture of what this might be, not list what it is. It's trying to paint a picture rather than fill in all of the details. And, and yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think that kind of comes back to the same conversation that, that's, that's, you know, like is an operator like, is it a CRD or or is it not a CRD? Does it does it require that an operator includes a custom resource definition and the controller that runs in the cluster to meet the definition of an operator? It's it's kind of in that same like encompassing area of like the definition of an operator right now. Well, if if we look at the uh, the original definition that came out of Coros when they they defined it, um, just just not gonna find this. So the original definition. That was from Brandon Phillips and, and uh, Koros said, an operator is an application specific controller that extends the Kubernetes API to create, configure and manage instances of complex stateful applications on behalf of a Kubernetes user. It builds upon the basic Kubernetes resource and controller concept, but includes domain or application specific knowledge to automate common tasks. Now that right there kind of has, um, a, a, I would argue three specific things that make something an operator. First, it extends the Kubernetes API. And if you look at extending the API, there's actually two ways to do this. Uh, you can use um, uh, custom API server, uh, which is what uh, the service catalog project did. And that's from before we had CRDs or uh, anything that created that, right? Uh, you can do that, although it's really, really hard. The much easier and more common path to do that is with CRDs and custom controllers and that kind of thing. And so I would argue if it extends the API in probably either one of those ways, most likely through a CRD because it's easier, uh, then that's the first check, right? Does it extend the API? And if you have a controller that never extends the API at all, you probably miss that checkbox. I mean, it's right in the definition of it has to extend the API and this builds upon the other parts because really what you're getting into is the declarative model. And in the declarative model, you declare what you want and then the system works to make that possible. But if you don't ever have a API to declare what you want, then your operator doesn't know what you want in order to make that possible. And so if you don't have that extension, you're probably not an operator. Uh, the second thing that it gets into is domain or application specific knowledge. And it goes on to say that it has to define common tasks, right? Uh, and, and so you need to look at, does it have it? So if something like meta controllers, my example of something, that's a controller, but it's not an operator because it doesn't have application specific knowledge. It's a controller that actually helps you build other controllers. But something like one of the Postgres operators that has application specific knowledge for Postgres, well, that has application domain specific knowledge in order to accomplish something. You're not going to be able to use that operator to run, I don't know, WordPress or something entirely different because it's only targeted at that. And then I would argue the third thing is, is it needs to manage instances of applications on behalf of the Kubernetes user. So you, you know, if I'm using kubectl and I want to deploy my SQL, right? I have to know my SQL. I've got to know the ins and outs. I've got to run commands. I've got to craft the files and do that kind of thing. I actually have to know Kubernetes and I have to know my SQL and I've got to know the business logic and marry it. And if I want something to happen or change within my cluster, like backups, things like that, I actually have to go create the cron job or what else I'm going to do, right? You have to deal with the business logic side of that. But an operator, it says, I'm going to capture information about that application, and then I'm going to manage that application for you based on what you've done for me. Do you say you need to have so many replicas and HA? Do you want backups? Okay, give me your schedule for backups. However we want to do it, 
we're just going to make it happen and we manage that for you so you don't have to think about it, right? Those are kind of the three big things that were in that definition. And if you use that definition and you basically rip out the stateful set side of it or the stateful part of it, right? And you just take that out. You've got those three criteria right there. And you can actually write that out in a long form. Um, and then you can test anything against those right? The Postgres operator and MetaControl are easy things to test. Flux is what's brought up the other day on the call is kind of that hard one to test. And, and I basically I've written up what that would look like. But this is one of those things like it's there plain as day as long as we just expand on that definition. And then we're not breaking from it. We're not trying to greenfield our own definition. And, and the details are there. So at least that's my two cents on this. And you don't have to get into the, the capability model. That's a later thing we could do. We can respond to the TOC in short order, both with a short form definition and an explanation. And we can move on to the other things because that's what they ultimately asked for. All right, I'll shut up now because I've been rambling for a while. I don't know, it's 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 good. I, I I agree. I mean, that's that that definitely is the current definition of an operator. Flux is definitely an example of something that's kind of in a, in a in a weird place. Like it doesn't extend, you know, the the, the Kubernetes API directly. I don't deploy like you know like the Flux Helm operator get, is a different different beast. Um, but and I think that it also like comes down to like you know managing an application from an operator perspective shouldn't be like a one time like install right like I, like like in using an operator to deploy Postgres is different than using an operator to manage the lights, to manage Postgres running in the cluster and make sure that it like, it, it continues to work, right? Like, like monitoring, like making changes to parameters that, that are necessary and things like this, like op operators ver for install versus operators for runtime. Yeah, Matt. Uh, I, I was just going to ask in our defining operators to respond to the TOC and to share to people, do we have to get into the nuances of what the common tasks are? Is that a requirement of providing an explanation? I, I don't know if like a requirement, I actually, I don't think that a requirement is to define the common tasks, but to like, to like, income, to like define what areas of the life cycle of an application that an operator like is potentially or should be responsible for is it is something that just installs an application then and then done and it never touches it again is that does that meet the definition of an operator or not that's a question if something that just installs an application so if we go back to let's go back to the definition because i think this is wonderful uh the definition says it says includes domain or application specific knowledge to automate common tasks right and so the question is, is uh, by something that just installs an application and never touches it again, is it actually automating common tasks? Um, we can sit around and argue whether it is or, or isn't. I, I would actually argue that it's not because you're not getting into the common tasks. But do we need to answer that question in some form of long form description in order to respond to the TOC on this? Um, do we have to, Jared, do you have any, any, you want to jump in on I'm, any, any, uh, I think right now we do with how we, we, we've not written it down. So, so either we're not being specific enough, right. Um, in, in the exact terms we mean, but I, cause I, cause I, I, I do, I do agree. Like, is it, is it enough, for example, to, uh, for, for, for definitional, like, like, let's just, let's apply the test, right. To, to that, the, that definition. Uh, is, uh, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm first going to pick on, pick on, uh, Helm, but is Tiller an operator? And, and, and because in, well, actually that's a bad one. That, that's wrong. Um, no, Tiller's not an operator and it's not a custom controller anyway. So it's an easy one. Yeah, to that's, pick why on. I was, that's why I was backing up because it's not a controller. Yeah. Um, and it's also not application specific. It's not targeted at something like Postgres to continue my example. It is a more general thing. And so it fails that test as well. Yeah. So, so, okay. So cert manager, so they're not calling themselves an operator right now under this definition is, would we consider cert manager an operator? It, it doesn't manage an application. So it manages certificates but it, it does extend the API. It is a controller. Do we have to answer that before we have a definition? Uh, like they don't brand themselves that and not no. all things that are extensions to the Kubernetes API are yeah, in fact operators. 
I, I agree with that, but but our we, we should be able to apply a, a litmus test to our own de definition before we in, even internally, yeah. right? We don't have to answer it to the TOC, but we should we should ask ourselves that, like like does our, is our is is the wording we're using in our definition specific enough before we pass a definition so that we don't have to be long form? Because I'm I don't want to go long form, like if we don't have to, but if we're missing specificity in in what we're saying, and too many things in our in our own like gut check before we pass it that's going to cause questions and discussion so, with the right let's ask this though let's ask this then um does the uh do, does it extend the kubernetes api well the answer to that is yes right um does it contain application specific knowledge now, and so the question is uh so so what is the actual application here is it their own custom application which is uh, something that it also manages. So let's try well, to answer this one. Hey guys, I have a quick question if I may. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a new one here, so I'm kind of uh, wrapping my head around. So the uh, <laughs> uh, my question here, because I, I see both uh, uh, arguments and they're all valid, but the question here seems to be is, do we actually have to use the word application? Because that's the only thing that I see so far that is creating the confusion because uh, some mana does have a, a a domain specific software that needs to have some uh, knowledge in order to be operated, but it's not, I, I wouldn't call it application, uh, like for example, Postgres. And that's the only word that is creating confusion, at least for me. Maybe you guys can help me. Oh, okay. So, so the original Coros definition said domain or application specific knowledge. And, and I, for one, don't want to remove the or application here because I think for a general audience, that's going to make that example more clear in their minds because they're going to start to ask, what's an application in my case for what I'm doing? And if you say domain or application specific, it kind of zooms in and answers it for most people, but it doesn't preclude the uh, domain part of it. And so uh, the chorus folks really, uh, I think, cleared that up for us when they originally wrote it. And so, no, that's great here. Does the... Um, does cert manager do domain or application specific stuff? Yes. Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. And then are, and, and this one is where maybe the hard one comes into, um, are the, the applications or, or the thing managed, right? Um, is it managed by the operator instead of the Kubernetes user? Yes. Yep. Right. And so, so I like framing it as a question that can hopefully be answered. Yes, no. And, and it can kind of be boiled down to those three questions. And maybe we've got to, to finagle the language a little bit of it. But if we can answer yes, no to those and all three are yes, then it's an operator by their definition. Right. Yep. How it does it and to what level it does it um, are, are things we can debate in essence, but it can be boiled down to, to three yes or no questions, I think. Yeah, but I think that what I'm struggling with, I think we're not in trouble with this here. Uh, we don't want to look at components and want to decide necessarily whether they're an operator or not. Very often the question that I hear from people is, okay, I have built X, Y, Z on top of Kubernetes, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Should, and it's kind of complex to manage because if it's just a very simple piece of workload, usually people might not care. Uh, but should I build an operator to manage and run this thing or shouldn't I? And would it help me? So coming more from an end user perspective rather than looking at something, oh, this looks like an operator. Does this really matter? It's only one thing I'm looking at it, but at the end of the day, one problem we need to solve as a community is making running workloads on Kubernetes less complex than it is today. And so, a so, lot of okay. frameworks have not really done a necessarily great job at that. Uh, like even at some point, we just made it more and more complex. Like Helm, for example, Helm charts did not really make it easier to run stuff, except that you have just to apply one Helm chart, but building it doesn't make anything easier and it doesn't cover certain things. Um, so that's my point here. Who do we want to help? Uh, so so uh, I, I think there's actually two separate things here. Uh, the first is helping people who have that question. And I think that's entirely valid to try to come up with answers for them. But then there's answering the question that was asked to SIG app delivery by the TOC, what is an operator? Because what it is and 
should I get into one? And then the third thing I would argue from what you just said is, how can I build a toolkit that's useful for people to help them move faster and make it simpler? Are, are three separate questions for three different target audiences that each need their own response. And so the first one here was just trying to, the, the TOC back before the holiday break asked this question. And now we're something like five months later and yeah, they're waiting for a response of what an operator is. And so users I, what? actually need? Yes, there was the question that it, Ken was agreed that as part of the working group, we want to answer questions that actually help people out there and just move beyond. And I, get, and I know why this question was asked. Uh, I was actually part of this conversation uh, and it came up as part of the operator hub discussion. If you remember, Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. about like installing I applications. So I think that these three questions actually go well together because if you have a construct there, like an operator, the first question is why does it exist? Yeah. When it, you know when it exists and we can define, okay, what, how should it be, what should constitute this construct? Like CDs, controllers, whatever. And how do I create one is then the next one. Yeah, certainly, but what it is today mightn't be what it is. But I, what I, I guess what I'm arguing for here is the TOC asked for something and we should probably give them the answer to the thing that they asked for and then take the other two things that were brought up and look at who the target audience is and then craft something specific for them because the definition of an operator isn't something that people who are creating frameworks probably need to have right and should i use an operator is kind of a separate thing and should i use an operator is kind of for end users who either want to create one or maybe look at using an existing one and then somebody who produces an operator is a, in, a, in an entirely different role and, and what they need to think about is different than the end users right and so there's different target audiences and i like to think I about totally it this way i totally disagree like, here honestly but but I have never built any product in my life that I did not first think of what I'm going to use it for. And then this, this feels like we talk about technical constructs that exist on, in our case, Kubernetes, like CODs and operators. And by the way, keep in mind that technically everything we do is cloud native. So this should also work outside of, of Kubernetes while we're not focusing on, on it right now. But I could build like, so even something like the current operator, like a file definition or something that has a reconciliation loop running on top of it, even with Lambda and uh, CNS3 bucket conceptually. The key question for me is why does this thing exist and why should people be using it? And then what falls into it for me is important. And then I'm thinking about the technical details. It feels a bit weird, just take the technical concept and then later on finding a use case for it. I, I, and I'm actually not arguing that. I'm, I'm actually arguing there's different roles in this whole thing. Okay, uh, and so I'll, I'll take uh, Helm for an example. You brought up Helm. And so with Helm, it's a package manager, right? At its heart, it is a package manager. And, and I like to relate it to something like apt. And so with apt, right, somebody who has domain knowledge of Debian based systems and domain knowledge of an application puts together a package and then distributes it and somebody else who doesn't need to know intimate knowledge of those Debian based systems or of operating that application can install it and get it up running quickly and use it, right? It's a great way to share applications and make it easy to install. It's why I use app get install all the time on my systems without actually knowing all the intricacies of where files need to go and the binaries and all this stuff. And, and that's kind of where Helm comes from. But if you break that down, there's two different roles. There's me as somebody who's producing the package and the knowledge I need and the considerations I need to have. And then there's somebody who's going to be installing it and the role they have where they need to discover the packages, be able to evaluate them and install them, but they don't need to know the intricacies. And some people are gonna wear both hats, right? Some people will wear both hats where I'm doing it. Uh, we used to use apt where I used to work to manage our own deployment workflows in staging production and things like that. And we needed to wear both hats. But the common case is you, you still have these different roles. And so to think about what you produce for those different roles and what's useful for them and not trying to put them all together because uh, 
you know, then you're, you're, you're starting to mix things up and you've got to pick what's for me and what's not and where do I go and to what level of detail. But actually crafting things that help people in the different roles where they're at, I think that would be useful. In our case, I've listed two here. Who's the, the operator consumer who's just going to install it and get it up and running. Then there's the person who's producing operators. Those are kind of two different roles. And then, of course, in this case, because there's an ask from the TOC, there's answering that TOC question um, and, and giving them what they asked for as just even a point of process. Because I, I think they're still wanting that, but I, I, I don't know if there's a TOC. No, there's no TOC member here to answer that. But even giving them as a role as somebody who asked for something and us giving them what they asked for. And so those are kind of the three things that I at least was thinking of. How do you give each of those their thing? So, so I'm going to chime in here, especially on that last point, or at least to start on that last point, is that um, we can, to the letter, give the TOC what they ask for, or we can give them what they need. And what they may need more than a strict technical definition is they may need, they might really have been asking the question of, okay, help us really define why operators are valuable. So when I think about this, and I'm, I've, I've been listening very, very carefully here, trying to form some opinions, and it, they're still not quite formed. But um, you know, to me, operators are a way of having somebody be able to package up a capability and for a different constituency to be able to consume that capability. At the core, that's what an operator is. I like parts of the definition that you drew out from the original core. Um, I, for example, love the fact they extend the API one. I think that one's pretty important. I, so I think that there's elements of that definition, but I tend to also want to back up and say, why? What are the problems that we're trying to solve with the operator before we start defining what it is? So, so I guess I'm, I'm, I'm lending some support to you, Alwa. So. But, uh, yeah. Let me ask this, are we, do we get to define what an operator is or is it something that is already defined in the market? Because we aren't greenfielding here. And, and I think that's, that's one of the things, it's not like we get to decide what an operator is. Operators have been in the market for years. And, and maybe they need to be uh, described and it need to be written down, but it isn't new. It isn't, we're not the creators of operators. I think that like that's true, um, but I think like the goal here is to better define what actually is an operator, so that we can kind of put like like um, something that maybe currently called an operator actually doesn't meet the definition of an operator, and therefore like as 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 a consumer of that operator, I don't expect the same functionality, the same services that that thing provides because it's like it's operator adjacent right now, right? Like I might look at Helm and Tiller, Helm v2, and say that's an operator because it's actually like to me, it creates this abstraction around the Kubernetes API. So I can just run Helm install and Helm upgraded to, to, to manage my charts, which are applications, and that's an operator. But like, that's not an operator. I think Matt, you agreed to that point. You shook your head pretty emphatically when Jared mentioned that Helm might be an operator. Uh, and like, being able to say, look, Helm, you might think of Helm as an operator, but it doesn't neatly fit into this bucket of what we, what we in this group define as an operator means like you shouldn't expect the operator services and operator functionality. And you shouldn't expect as a consumer for it to fit into like other tooling that are built around the operator ecosystem. So I think like, you know, defining it is, is, is definitely necessary here. We, 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 we don't get to define like what people are going to create, but we do get to define like this label operator that we get, that people can kind of like slap on it and say like, this meets the definition of an operator. And that's, that's what I think here. And even to, to the installation, like one thing that, that I can see, sometimes people just use them as better installers to, to yes. some extent, but just use it to install complex applications. But like one key aspect of an operator for me is also the reconciliation loop, like the dynamic piece of it. It's just not a system that simply installs something and then doesn't care what's, what happens. It actually checks that it, that something happens because conceptually, if I'm just doing a cube control apply, let's go back to like the very basics and I'm just applying a YAML file. I don't know whether this thing is even working out. So yeah. it is the basic primitive of the platform, but I'm not sure whether anything happens. So yeah, I, I want to I mean, have I think a smarter that... figure yet. I think that comes back to the including in the definition that it's like it extends the Kubernetes API and it has an in-cluster controller or uh, I, I don't know if maybe in-cluster might be too 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 broad there but like it seems to be the common use case but like a controller which is continually running a reconciled loop to like to, to manage that application. Right, Jared. 
So, uh, so to throw a loop here, um, let, let's let's t let's go back to our helm example uh, uh, and and bring up. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Kudo into this, right? Because because and, and my question is, does this have to be a, a a singular holistic unit? Because for example, Kudo can then start to bring in a reconciliation loop and and various day two operations to a helm chart, right? Eventually to a CNAB bundle, everything else. So is that combination of things that ins installation of Postgres with uh, from a chart with a kudo you know kudo lifecycle around it is that now an operator or is it not because it's not a single controller that also knows about Postgres so so l l let's get into this though so uh We'll, we'll ask the question with, with the Coros one and then and maybe debate it, right? Does it extend the Kubernetes API? All right. Does it, oh, where are my questions? What's ah. it though? The, the, it, the it now becomes the question. What's, what's the it? Yeah. In, and, in and, the Kudo example, yeah. In the Kudo example, is domain or application specific knowledge included in Kudo? I mean, what is what? What's the application? Is it the application that could, that the operator that was written in Kudo is, or is it the 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 app the, the Kudo is like a meta operator, right? Like it actually like is the it has the application and the domain specific knowledge of how to like create and run that operator inside the cluster. Jared, is that a fair exactly exactly yeah? It's so so if I understand it right, what you're saying is Kudo itself is not an operator, but an operator created with Kudo has extends the API and contains the application or domain specific knowledge, right? Y yes. Now that, that, that said it, in some cases it only contains domain specific knowledge, right? Because it's bringing in an external helm chart. Sure. And then you've got to ask, uh, are common tasks being accomplished? Right. Um, and, and their language was, to automate common tasks. That's the language in the Coros definition. Uh, and so would common tasks be done? And so in this case, a common task might be, uh, we'll say Postgres, install, upgrade, delete. Um, you might do backups. Can those common tasks but be accomplished? We're defining right common tasks, and that's also why we have the capability model. In I, because right now no, we have I, a I, more specific what the common task is, because actually, but, to, to the previous point of, of certificate management, renewing a certificate is a common task. Updating a secret is a common task. Updating routing rules is a common task. And, and the common tasks are gonna be different per application or domain area, right? I think that's one of the things we just caught because doing uh, cert manager is gonna have, and certificate management is gonna be an entirely different set of common tasks from something like Postgres. I hadn't thought of that before. Um, that, that's why I think defining what, what a common task, at least by example, is. And I think that's what the capability model did in, in but, the past. Well, it went way beyond that with them like self-managing and so forth, but defining like what is a common task, at least that we have for Kubernetes primitives. So we could give examples of common tasks, but I don't think we can define them because to define them means we need to know all the areas and certificate uh, cert manager or yeah, uh, and Postgres operators are gonna have, you know, a database operator, they're gonna have different sets of common tasks. And I'm sure there's so many different applications out there with so many different common tasks that it's probably not useful for us to define the common tasks because we're not gonna know everything to be able to define everything, but providing examples of common tasks to illustrate them for people may be very useful. Yeah, I don't think that we're gonna be able to like provide you know, an exhaustive list of every possible common task that an operator could 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 meet, right? Because like, to your point, like every application is a little bit different. There's a common set of common tasks around like application lifecycle management, which like an operator doesn't have to necessarily like implement, but you know, Kudo, when I write an Nginx operator using Kudo, like it may be that that operator is just installing and upgrading Nginx inside the cluster. That Does that still sense. meet the... But it's also going to, if you break out of the application, as we talked about earlier to the domain, you may not have the simple install process 
right? And I think Cert Manager brought up is a fantastic example of that. Are you really installing an instance of an application? It's more domain area than application. And so do those common tasks hold when you break out of the application model into the domain model? And, yeah. and I'm not I sure mean, that, 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 works. that that does your application need a valid cert to be there, or if you're using Let's Encrypt, that's a if I would write a Let's Encrypt operator, which would actually make a lot of sense, by the way, to have a Let's Encrypt operator that would automatically renew my certificate. Matt, though, to go to your to your point too, like I mean, the core OS original core OS definition said domain or application specific knowledge, not domain and application specific knowledge. So, like in in this case, like I totally agree with you. There's a very different definition between domain and application, and like this engine x kudo example is like it's kind of like it's not a very full featured operator but it, it still meets the definition there uh, let me ask this to actually create a definition do we need to define this because i know uh we could take a long time defining and thinking mm -hmm. through all these things in order to create that that definition is it useful for us to go down all of these roads or just to consider and give some examples of common tasks and move on to some of the other things like the role of as a consumer of an operator, should I use one, right? Uh, and move on to something that, that targets that role and provides them with the contextual information they need to say, okay, should I bother with an operator in this particular case? How can I myself figure out if I should as a consumer of them? And that may be, um, it may be useful to just switch gears into that instead of spending lots of time going down this hole. I think the answer to that question about whether we should have to, whether we should include that definition kind of comes back to like, should, is, should the definition of operator be like this really wide umbrella that covers like everything that like sits inside the Kubernetes cluster that manages other applications, um, not like a, not, not a final application or should it be a very narrowly targeted, like very specific thing that says, like it has to extend the Kubernetes API, it has to include domain or specific knowledge. Like the original definition says it has to be stateful components. That doesn't feel like, I think we, most people agree that that could probably get removed. Um, and does it have to have an in-cluster reconcile controller loop that's running to like manage the life cycle or instead of just a one-time process of like managing these? Like if we, if we start with saying like, is that the definition of an operator? That's, that's you know, kind of relatively broad, but like it, 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 it excludes random things. I mean, if, if I take out stateful stuff from theirs, it seems pretty still solid to me um, because if I go and start extending it further, yeah. then you have a hard time of saying, I've got a random controller and some CRDs and it doesn't do anything that's domain or application specific. Is it now an operator? Yeah, I, I, I actually agree. I think that's a good starting point to the definition. I think that like the only one that I, I have some doubt still about personally is like an in cluster controller reconcile loop is that a requirement to be an, an operator because like as you know kube control extensions are being like more and more like widely adopted and you're seeing those more is it possible that you could actually have something that runs as an operator that's invoked through a kube control plugin as opposed to like running inside the cluster so is in cluster required as the reconcile loop you mean so reconciler uh, being in cluster yeah, so the, the, is there a requirement? The reconciling could be out of cluster, but the reconciler it needs to be in the cluster. I personally think that it has to have a reconciler. I, and there has to be some reconciliation. So, so uh, I, I think th this is a great topic to dig into. And uh, so, so let's get to the heart of this. Kubernetes is a declarative model, right? You declare what you want, and then the controller takes that and attempts to make it so and provide status on that situation, right? And so if you move it out of cluster, right, then where is the thing that looks for the changes that is reconciling and making the necessary changes to say, oh, this no longer matches, now I'm gonna update. In Kubernetes, that tends to be the controller, whether it's custom controller, whatnot, looking at events. If you've got something outside of the cluster, it is no longer watching for events, it's no longer watching for changes on an event loop that does that. And so, in many ways, yeah, well, you've broken I from... Mean, oh, go I ahead. just bring up one example where this is not the case, actually. Um, oh, please. Argue that this, is not, this is not an operator, but what we do, for example, or what you can look at is monitoring system that have Rambuk automation enabled. They're not running in the cluster. None of these components does. But we look, for example, and, and our goal more or less, and we don't, we don't use any of these components, but we have a lot of what an operator does. We look at response times of an application or of, of a service. When these response times go above a certain threshold, 
we automatically scale up that service or if we, for an error behavior, we disable feature flags. So we do a lot what an operator does. We can do it directly with the cube control apply. We actually reconcile whether the service is doing what we want it to do going beyond just the instances running. But technically there's no component running inside the cluster. And is, so, there, is there an extension of the Kubernetes API in there also? No. Okay. Using, I could, well, we have, uh, we have built it with extensions to the API, but I can so, do it entirely without extensions. I can just have a monitoring system called an Ansible script that does a cube control apply. And it, one I, quick I, question on that. Do you actually think that that's an operator or do you want to call that an operator or not? Mm. I don't need to call it an operator. It uses the operator pattern. That's the interesting thing uh, for what it's done, but it's not a Kubernetes uh, operator. Uh, I, Jared, you're first. Okay. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to throw a wrench in, so you go first. Okay, well, what I was gonna say is, is this application or domain specific? I was gonna ask yes. that question. It is application and domain specific in both sides, as we have domain application specific SLOs. And we have uh, domains and application specific actions like disabling, enabling feature flags, scaling things up and down. So it is application specific. And actually the only one who can define it is somebody who knows that application. So the, the system is targeted at a specific application like Postgres and not applications in general. So I can't monitor some random application and say, look at the metrics for this and scale it. It's a general thing, right? Or is it a specific to an application or, or, or domain like certificate management? I would always have to define this, this very example where I'm using it for dynamically mentioning, uh, uh, managing deployments based on, on monitoring data. Uh, it would always be application specific what I want to do it under certain cases. I mean, this goes beyond just scaling stuff up if it gets slow. I could say this is not application specific. So, so um, it's, it's to the application specificity, not to the type specificity. Like you're not monitoring all deployments and scaling them. It's only deployments and you can relate the type of application running as the deployment and then do that. Yeah. We would have to know what it is because otherwise we wouldn't know the actions to take. Yeah. Okay. But you're, so you're essentially else. running a controller, but you're running it out of cluster rather than in cluster is what you're saying. Yeah. And they have a reconcile loop as I'm monitoring and looking at the data. So I'm fulfilling okay. all, almost all requirements at a conceptual level, but not at an implementation level. And I'm not claiming it's supposed to be an operator, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying I'm implementing all the concepts we talked about. Conceptually, just my implementation is different. Okay, I, I, I would like to, to point out one thing before I pass it off here real quick is, uh, operators become an amazing branding thing. And so I know lots of people want to put things into operators. I think it's useful to say what it is and what it isn't. But I, I also don't want to, to, to hope for more things to be operators to somehow fit into the branding bucket as part of this whole thing. That just occurred to me. There's this desire to say, oh, my thing's an operator too, um, to use it as a branding and, and a thought. And there's so many useful things that are not operators. We shouldn't try to go with that branding bandwagon. But that's me. I'll shut up with my soapbox. All right. Okay. I'm going I'm to try to throw a quick, quick wrench into this because um, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but... Uh, you know, there, there's something here that has a lot more possibilities to it, potentially, and, and it is, okay, well, when we say reconciler, right, and, and, and controller, what we really mean is a process that is watching a get endpoint that detects a, uh, you know, is, is detects a, a level change, it compares two things in advance of state, right? Like, that's all a reconciler is. And, and we have a baked in assumption at the moment that that is coming from that whatever the, the the endpoints of whatever you're watching you know, those resources um now let's say and uh, in, in getting to marks like like running it from cube cuddle point or running it from your command line uh you know, if you have all the controller logic baked into a cli tool that did all the exact same things except the end user was the one say kicking off and, and there's probably there's other ways to do this of course but like if i'm just hitting up enter, up enter, up enter on my on my computer over and over and over again, running one run of the controller loop, control loop, right, event loop, is that an operator? Like like it's it's doing all those things. And, and there's 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 you know some some things I've been thinking on and, and, and others here like 
they've been thinking about like where these operators like semantics could be very useful without being like in a an event driven like or event loop right like not being bound by that event loop and always running yeah i mean i agree i also really quick point out like we're like at time for like what this meeting was scheduled for um Whoops. so like it's it's a it's an interesting conversation. There's a lot of a lot of opinions. It's it's a good conversation. Um, Jared, I, I totally agree with with that point though. Like, and I, I don't have an answer for you. I think like that's just something that like I I do think we need to define. Matt, to your point, like we need to define like I don't I don't think like we want to say like here's this like it's it's a branding opportunity and what what might potentially be included in an operator. There's there's there may be stuff that gets carved off and gets a different label and gets a different term that has its own working group and its own sig over time and like maybe the coop cuddle plugins is not actually an operator and in cluster control reconcile loops are actually a requirement. Um, I think like part of our goal here should be to to, to make that that decision though. Um, yeah, I, and I guess I'll, I'll just leave. When I think about what we should do and what we can do and what we're scoped to do, I was actually reminded that this all falls under the TOC and I just dropped a link into the TOC uh, scope, right? Um, and so I, I, you'll find me being a little careful in coming up with things like the TOC isn't scoped with creating terms, but we can document what's already there. And we can create white papers that are useful for people, but we don't get to create whole categories. Um, and, and or I, I don't really think that there's scope for that. And so I'm just keeping this in mind. And so when you all wonder why I come with the opinions I come with in the direction, it's really because I'm attempting to stay in scope and on direction. Uh, you, you'll find that a lot with me. Um, and so at least that it, it, it will express why I come at it the way I do. I think that's, that's a, that's a great link to kind of, kind of like limit the scope of what we're trying to do when we define it. So well um so let's wrap it up what's our what's our action items between now and 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 two weeks uh, should we work in this doc try to try to pare this down get to a definition um and mark uh, what do you think communication here or or in the mailing list i mean i think uh can you define what what here is like wait for two weeks until the next next uh meeting or the mailing list would be like more ad hoc and like uh, in, in in continuous right yeah yeah exactly like what, what what do we what do we want to kick this off with uh in the next two weeks here yeah i mean i think we should continue to work on the on the on the document i think you know like everybody has it it's like listed as the first topic here like we can we can edit it we can make comments on it and the mailing list is there to like discuss stuff but like i mean i'm look i think all of us are like uh pretty pretty excited and have some strong opinions about it so like let's discuss them in in that document and like if if we need to we can we can go to the mailing list too but there's no reason to wait until the next two week meeting either uh, so I have well, one quick question here. I wrote up uh, another document. Just I was trying to figure yeah. it out, starting with the definition and then ex explanation and test. It's radically different, and I didn't want to like overwrite what you already had. Uh, I can send that out to the mailing list or or otherwise share it. Um, but it I, because it's so different in structure, I didn't want to like drop it in and go crazy on your document. Uh, so I wasn't sure what to do, but I'll share it to the mailing list and then we can take it from there. Um, this was me just trying to work through it and pick it apart um, with details on each thing. But yeah, I don't no, want to mess with yours, which is the reason I'm not going to just drop it in. It's like two and a yeah. half pages long. I, I mean, I've, I've read through the document you sent it out this morning. It's, yeah. it's, it's good. Like, I mean, I think also it'd probably be worth adding a link to the, uh, the other doc to it as like an alternative, like suggested reading for people who are reading that one doc is like, you know, another approach sure. to this. Yeah, awesome. and, and I was just trying to, I wanted a logic, reason-based structure through my thinking on this, which is why I put it together and tests. Um, so that was my purpose because I hadn't really thought through it prior to writing that up. Writing sometimes gives me the ability to, to think through my, my structure and thoughts. Um, but yeah. Great. Um, awesome. Any other thoughts, anyone? No? Great. Um, let's wrap it up. Yeah. Um, maybe having like everybody's opinion on like the different capabilities that we have in there would be great collection until next time because then we have something to discuss. So I usually like meetings where we have something where we, that we can prep for. Like we have now a lot of things that we want to have in there and we can have at least from the people who are here plus the ones on the mailing list. What do you consider important? Yeah, I think we like, did. You consider this, the this... reconcile loop important. Do you consider the CRD important? If not, why not? You could even put this into a Google form and see what comes out of it. 
exactly. I think this meet this meeting came did a lot of really good discovery and kind of opened up some questions that we can like now have like more more deeper dives into those questions and hopefully you know in the next two you know, two weeks from now when we get back together for a meeting we'll like have a very clear agenda with some questions that we should have some some more everybody set a little bit of chance to kind of rock and read and understand so. Um, all right. Well, let's wrap up for now. Uh, thanks everybody for attending. We'll send the the like notes out. The agenda is there, and the in the Zoom recording will go up. Super. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.